Please welcome one of the world's leading authorities on consumer robotics, chairman, CEO, and founder of iRobot, Colin Angle. Hi. Um, I'm super excited to be here and talk to uh, you all today. I'm Colin, but really, at the end of the day, uh, I'm a builder. I love to create practical devices. And when we founded iRobot back 29 years ago, it was based on a dream. Well, more realistically, it was on a, a robot dream. You see, we've been promised robots. From the 60s, we've been promised robots that were going to come in and do amazing things in our lives. And yet, when we looked at what we were being served up, beautiful, imaginative, fictitious robots, it wasn't enough. And iRobot was founded to change this, to be a company that created practical devices that made a difference in the world. And if you look at these robots behind me, they, they've done some amazing things. We had a robot that went into the reactors after the Fukushima disaster and found paths for the TEPCO employees to go in and enable a cold shutdown of that reactor. We sent a robot into the Gulf of Mexico after the Deep Horizon uh, oil disaster based on a theory that the emulsifiers used to break up the oil were causing the oil to shrink, sorry, sink down into the water and create vast oceans of oil which was going to come up. And so we took one of our robots, threw it into the Gulf of Mexico and found these pools of oil, enabling them to be more effectively cleaned up. But probably the most famous robot that, that we've created thus far is, is the Roomba. And, um, it's really been amazing to be associated with this small disc-like object. 25% um, of all money spent on vacuum cleaners today is now spent on robot vacuum cleaners. Uh, 25 million of these robots have been sold to date. And, you know, we've actually had an idea, wrote it down on a piece of paper, built it, and um, uh, changed a few things. And when the robot was launched in, in 2002. Um, it wasn't very smart, but it was focused on solving a problem. Uh, you told it how big the, uh, uh, the room was, and it would go out and do its thing. And, and this particular uh, video also highlights iRobot's first tagline, if it's down there, we'll get it. We, we got better. Uh, that was not particularly successful. But over the years, we have improved the robot. Because the promise of robot vacuuming is that you buy this thing, you take it home, you put it down in your home, and you never worry about vacuuming again. That's, that's the promise. But the robot wasn't yet delivering on that promise. It would get stuck on fringe, on carpets. So we tried to convince the world that fringe carpets were bad. That failed. Um, and so we had to actually figure out how to sense when the thing was picking up the fringe and put it down. Pushing the on button. Well, that's not what is supposed to be happening. You're supposed to just have it work. And so we had the robot uh, automatically schedule. We built the robot. Uh, in a way that it would last longer and that it would actually look down at the floor and see the dirt, just kind of like you would be if you were vacuuming, because oftentimes one pass over an area of dirt isn't enough. And so the robot had to be smart enough to do the job. Kept going. Uh, if you own a pet and don't own a Roomba, that's, that's, a, that's a silly thing because uh, Roombas go out every day and they, they clean up the pet hair, but the, br the pet hair was ending up in the bristles of the brushes and you have to clean it, and that wasn't very magical and robotic, and so we had to actually reinvent the bristle brushes on the, on the robot, turn them into these rubber extractors to work. Started working on navigation, because if you lived in a nice-sized house, the Roomba might run out of batteries, and if you knew where you were and you knew what you had cleaned, you could go back plug yourself back in, come out again, recharge, and finish the job. And last year, 
we added another feature to the Roomba, this home base, where it will empty the Roomba after it's done. So that if you usually empty your Roomba every one or two weeks, you could go a year without touching your Roomba. And so this was really cool. Um, and of course, every time we launch a new product, people say, well, what's next? And we came to a realization that all of these advancements that I just described were making the robot more and more autonomous. So what's next? Well, autonomy is not intelligence. Autonomy is much less than what real intelligence is about. And if robotics is going to take the next leap forward, we need to figure out how to make our robots actually smart. So we have some really cool new tools. Voice understanding, so the smart speakers like the Alexa actually give you the opportunity to talk to your home. And if you can talk to your home, you can talk to your robots. And that, that's really cool. You can say things like, Alexa, tell Roomba to go clean the kitchen. <coughs> but if you think about that statement, it almost works, it was, but it assumes you know what the kitchen is. So if you marry that super powerful tool with an actual understanding of what the home is about, well, the robot can suddenly do some new exciting things. So to talk about um, uh, these new enhanced levels of intelligence, uh, I'll, I'll use a, an analogy um, of exploring the moon. It is Mars, after all. And if you think about autonomy, I view that as the baseline. If you're an astronaut up on the moon and your mission is to explore the moon, you've been trained, you know kind of what to look for, and you're wandering around looking for stuff, uh, you can do a reasonable job. But if that was the beginning and end of the performance of the astronaut, you probably wouldn't be fully satisfied because really you want experts back at mission control to actually be able to effectively communicate with that astronaut. Go search Sector 7, hey, there's something interesting in Sector 2, oh, look, that rock you're looking at to your left, uh, uh, the, the uh, geologist back here in Houston uh, would like a closer look at it, can you pick it up? So the astronaut isn't fully autonomous, he's actually taking direction, he's listening to mission control and is being responsive to what he's being told and this actually magnifies and amplifies his utility. If the astronaut had another astronaut with him on the moon, you could actually do more things. One guy could drive the moon buggy while the other was a mission specialist looking for something uh, they could lift and, and do things they couldn't do on their own and work together, further amplifying their utility. So this collaborative type of intelligence is another multiple, multiplier in the utility of what is possible. And of course, if you're really serious about taking on a mission to the moon, it takes a system, not just one robot. You need a way of getting the astronaut, sorry, not just one astronaut, you need the uh, rocket ship to get the astronaut to the moon, someone in the orbital capsule to make sure they can get back. You need to be able to recover the capsule when it comes uh, back here to Earth. And you think about the coordination of that entire system. If we could pull that off automatically with a system of robots and devices, oh my God, what we might accomplish. So the point of my talk here is to suggest that autonomy is the beginning, not the end, of what we're trying to accomplish with the robots that we create. By coupling the physical device with intelligence, with interaction, voice understanding, and an understanding of the environment, we can dramatically increase 
the types of challenges and the utility of the devices that we build. So, uh, let me bring it back to the robots a little bit and now replay some of the ideas about what we can do as we move beyond the limiting concept of autonomy. So our hero in my first little bit is this, this brand new product launched last week. This is the Roomba S9. It is a monster of a Roomba. Uh, 40 times the, the, the vacuuming power of our entry robot. All sorts of amazing things. But because it understands its environment, it can act and bring capabilities that we couldn't do before. Right, because an autonomous robot can be set up to clean your home every day for a year without you touching it. Okay, that's cool, but if I'm sitting down watching the television and I spill something on the floor, I don't want to wait to the next day before I clean it up, and I, I certainly don't want to resort to my Luddite ancestry and go to the closet to get an upright vacuum because that's, that's silly. I want to say, Alexa, clean the living room. And because the S9 understands the home, because it knows what the living room is, well, it can do that. Uh, it can go and say, okay, well, I, I know I'm over here, I need to drive to the living room, I know what the living room is, I'm going to systematically clean the living room, and I might even understand a good strategy for cleaning the living room, and do an amazing and thorough job allowing me to keep watching the TV and not worry about it. So, let me add another uh, actor to my, to my list. This is the, uh, the, the BravaJet M6. This is a mopping robot, and it also has the ability to understand its environment. And guess what? They can work together. And so, if instead I'm sitting at home, and I notice that somebody just walked through the, the kitchen and left muddy tracks all over it, um, I want to clean that up too but it's a more complicated job. And I'd like to say something like, hey, Alexa, clean the muddy tracks left in the kitchen. Truth, uh, full disclosure, you can't say that yet. You can say, Alexa, tell Roomba to clean the kitchen and then Bravajet to clean the kitchen. But if I could say something like this, the house would know this is a muddy spill. I should use two, multi two robots to work together in order to solve this task. And... Uh, have the right thing happen. Again, enabled by the fact that I know what the kitchen is, I know what robots are in the home, and so that I know that a muddy spill, okay, first you gotta go vacuum up all the dry stuff, and then you go in with a mop and clean it up, and it works. And the utterance aside, this works today. The robots are able to go out, do their job, come, talk to the, the partner robot, and achieve the end goal. And so lastly, <coughs> what about the system? Well, let's add another robot to, to, to my menagerie. This is the uh, soon-to-be-released Terra lawn mowing robot, and we add that to the home. And of course, now we have a system. We can talk to more than just robots. We can talk to other devices in the system and so that we can add connected refrigerators, connected coffee machines, thermostats, uh, Alexa smart speakers, uh, and end up with a home filled with connected devices that we can talk to and know where they are within the home. And with that type of power, we can legitimately start addressing some incredibly important problems. And one of the examples I like to use because I think that at the end of the day, extending the independent living of our elder population is going to be the most important application of robotics there will be. Um, this is a freight train that is coming and if we don't use technology to address it, we're very likely to see a decrease in the standard of living in our lifetime of our elderly people. And so, to live independently, there's stuff you got to do. The first thing on the list is to maintain the home. 
And so surprise, surprise, this is why at the end of the day, iRobot is so focused today on building robots that can maintain the home so that we're mopping, we're vacuuming, we're mowing, we have lots of other cool things that we're working on as well. And so in a coordinated fashion, the home is maintained. But that's not enough. There are more things on the list that you need in order to uh, live independently. And I'm not going to go through them all, but to give you just a sample, uh, how do I, in a non-invasive fashion, figure out uh, whether Nana is alive and well, going through routine, and um, is stable for the day? Well, you can just look at the pattern of use of the devices and where those devices are used in the home to develop confidence that a consistent daily routine is being honored. <clears throat> At bedtime, you can ensure the house transitions into a mode which is both safe and secure and protective of the occupant in that home. Uh, everything from making sure that the doors are locked to making sure that there is a lighted path from the bedroom to the bathroom at night so that Nana can get there safely. So, by integrating all of these devices into one system, what you've actually done is turn the house into a robot, giving it sensors, giving it actuators, giving it the ability to take care of the people that live in the house. And with an appropriate combination of AI and voice understanding and spatial understanding, we create a home that you live your life and it just does the right thing. So <clears throat> that's a vision that I believe uh, is in the near term. That is something that is beginning to exist today in the robots and systems that, uh, that we're building. And uh, you can even see them uh, live and in action at the uh, Tech Expo next door. Thank you very much.